Blessed is the man that walketh not in the council of the heathen, that sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in this law that see I did it sunrise and sundown. Him I go deal like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth fruit in his season. Him live never I go wither, and whatsoever him doeth shall prosper. Yea! The heathen them now they saw them deal like a chaff with the wind driveth away. Therefore the heathen them never go turn upon judgment that the sinner man them in the congregation of the righteous for the Lord God Jah. Look at the way of the righteous and the way of the sinner man them always and always I will perish. Let the people of the most high God say, Jah! Kadamawe, Gromawe, Ate, La, E. Exact beer. Tana, Istalina, Bashante, Shante, 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 Shante. Kadamawe, Gromawe, Ate, La, E. Where two and three meet in the name of the most high Jah. At death, so Jaja de. If Jaja never build up your house, the builder, I go build it in vain, same way. If Jaja never watch upon your house, the watchman, I go watch it in vain. The name of the Lord is a strong tower, and the righteous run into it, and them is safe. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but Jah shall deliver him from all of them. And I give thanks, and I give thanks, and I give thanks. I ooze with Allah, him in a shaitan, rajim. Bismillah, rahman, rahim. Le ila fi kurash ila fi imri la tashitai wa saif fal yabudu rabba haza belt allazi atamana um bin ju'i wa atamana um bin alf a'uzu billahi min ash-shaytani r-rajim bismillahi r-rahmani r-rahim alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin ar-rahmani r-rahim maliki yawm ad-din iyyaka na'budu wa iyyaka nasta'in ihdina siratal al-mustaqim siratu allazina an'amta alayhim ghayr al-maghdubi alayhim wa ladwalin Amin. Sadakallahu azim. Sadakallahu azim. Sadakallahu azim. Aou ma ou sobo lisa. A danu wato. E wo a sikle a fo. Akpe. 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 Akpe kaka. Akpe siya. Akpe. Akpe. This is the black pot aka kukushonimo. Where we speak truth to power. And my name. Black Rastana in every traditional African home, there is a black pot, and each time this black pot sits on the fire, ingredients of so many different types, shapes, and sizes, colors, aromas, and even flavors put aside all their differences and find their way into the black pot where they are subjected to some amount of heating. They produce what is known as food in all its sumptuousness. Oh, we enjoy this food. The black pot does not enjoy the food. The ingredients do not enjoy the food, yet every time they will collaborate to produce this food. Now, this is what we must learn from this collaboration. Now, the black pot represents the continent of Africa, whilst the ingredients represent us. Therefore, we must set aside all our differences, differences of religion, differences of color, differences of age, differences of uh, creed, and come together this time round. Not to produce food, but development for our people, our continent, our land. We are so much of a selfish people. We want to plant the pepper, the tomatoes and the onions. One season crop so we can harvest quickly, eat quickly, sleep quickly, die quickly, be buried quickly and be forgotten quickly. We don't want to plant trees. Because trees take so long to grow. And we fear that we might not live long enough to benefit from the shade of these trees. So we prefer planting the pepper, the onion, and even the garden eggs. It is time to put aside all this selfishness and take the very wonderful lesson coming from the collaboration between the black pot and the ingredients. Let us plant the seedlings to great trees right now. Even if we don't live long enough to benefit from the shades of the trees, generations yet to come, our children, our children's children, they would all come and benefit from the shades of these trees. This must be that Joshua generation, a generation that is thinking about the next generation so selflessly. 
This is the black pot, a.k.a. Koko Shonim. And here we don't criticize, but if we must criticize, we we'll only criticize for one reason, to build and not to destroy. Here we don't personalize issues. We deal with just issues, raw issues. It's an issues-based conversation. That is why we say we are in the service of God and country. This is the black pot, a.k.a. Koko Shonim, where we speak truth to power. And we are supported by ISIT, I-S-I-T. Now, if you're tired of social media's negativity, all the negativity you get from social media, all the violence, all the racism, all the nakedness and nudity, now this is your app. It is very, very positive. Now, what does it do? You can go on live. At the same time, you can make video and audio calls. You can message. And it's crystal clear. Oh, your information is kept very, very much intact. Oh, my God. Yes, your information is very important to us. So we keep it under lock and key. Look, with is it? Everything there is positive. Anything negative will never come out because we are positive and powerful algorithms that sap out anything that is negative. It will never show. And is built by Africans. In fact, Ghanaians in the United States of America. Oh my God. Support the African business. Africans are capable of doing it. Africans also deserve to rise to the highest points of life. Yes. Nobody has a monopoly over success. We all must reach there. This is, is it the next big thing in social media. Download that from App Store and Google Play for free. Everything is free. And join me on Is It. That's where I am. And let us full joy this relationship. Meet other positive people. Upload your videos and also upload your photographs. Tell your story and make it big. This is Is It. Connect with family and friends for free. This is the Blackport. And we are also called Black Empire Media. Black is spelled B-L-A-K-K. -K. And we are on YouTube. Oh, please subscribe to our YouTube page. Yes, our YouTube channel and click on the notification button so that every time we come your way like this, you'll be the first to see us. We are live on Pan-African TV, also live on Loud Silence TV. We are super live on Black Empire TV. My name, Black Rasta. Now, the very first story we are looking at today is rolling on your screens. And what does it say? It says, Big Demo hits Magdan. Who is Magdan? This is Magdan. Oh, yes. This is Magdan. Now, Magdan is a self-made businessman. Many people have said that he's worth a lot of millions. He has a lot of property around Ghana and beyond. He's also the owner of the private jet, as you see here. Now, it's an outfit that rents out private jets. And also, he's involved in doing so many different things to do with haulage, aviation, and even the sea. He is a very interesting personality. Rich as they say he is, he refused to pay his electricity bill at Electrochem. What is Electrochem? Electrochem is one of his business branches that he has used as an investor for the Ada Songo Salt. Should I break it down? Now, Ada Songo Salt is the best salt in the whole world. In fact, if you want the most spiritual salt, it is this salt you see, Ada Songo salt. Now, it comes from the lagoon known as the Songo Lagoon. Why is it spiritual? Now, let's look at the history very briefly. There was a great ancestor by name Nenekoli. Nenekoli, in fact, came all the way from another part of the world and came into Ada. And when he arrived with his people, they settled there. He was a hunter. He shot at an animal. The animal took to its heels. He knew he had hit the animal. So he was trailing the animal to find out where it was going to drop dead and he would pick it up for dinner. But he kept moving. The animal kept moving. He followed the animal. Some people said it was a bird. Other people said it was a rabbit. Whatever it is, we are going to play it safe by just saying it was an animal. He found himself in the middle of the jungle in Adan. And all of a sudden, a woman appeared and said, Hey, I am that animal you shot. I intentionally lured you into this area so I could give you a gift. He was shocked. But who are you? 
He said, I am the goddess of this thing that I own and I'm going to give to you. The land that you stand on, I own it. Oh gosh. He said, turn around and look. When Nenekone turned around, he saw that there was so much salt around and the lagoon was also flowing. He said, this is what I'm going to give to you. Taste it and see. He tasted it and it was so beautiful and so nice. He said, take this for your people. But I give you conditions. Under no circumstances should anybody come to harvest this with gold on them. It means you can't wear any gold ornaments to this place. Number two, nobody should ever monopolize this place. Everybody has the right to come in and harvest this salt because salt is life. Nobody must be denied life. He gave him this and a few things more. And then a colleague gave it to his people. So the people of Adan know that this place is never ever to be monopolized. It's a gift to humanity. Anybody can come from any part of the world and be part of this. The people go in there and they also harvest it and that is their main stay in the area. Hear me now. There was a time when there was a big fight. In fact, a painting. A painting was the one who went over to the place now called Pambros. He had a concession. Now there was another concession. Oh my God. And a third concession. We're going to break it down very simply so that you would understand it without giving you too much details. But the people still wanted to go and get their salt. Those who were the legal concessions blocked them. They brought the police in and then they started shooting. They said people were stealing their salt. We have the concession. The indigents want to come to our concession and take our salt. The indigents also said, this is our lagoon. We have the right to go in and take the salt. Concession or no concession. Guns were fired and Margaret Kuono lost her life. Her statue is standing there in Adan. We all have seen that statue. Margaret Kuono. Find me that statue. Margaret Kuwonu. In fact, she was shot. At the time she was shot, in fact, she was a pregnant woman. All because of the Adan salt. So Rawlings had to fly in. President Rawlings, this helicopter that came and picked the dead body and took it all the way to Accra. And then all the concessions were stopped because of that confusion. We all remember this story clearly. Now when Rawlings did this, he wanted to find a lasting solution to the Adan Songo problem. So he brought in some Cubans who had long been harvesting salt commercially to come in and advise. And when the Cubans came in, they researched and came out with what is known as the master plan. When the master plan came out, the whole nation applauded and said that it was a good material. The Cubans had done their work and they had left. But what is contained in the master plan? It said that under no circumstances should the salt in the lagoon be monopolized, not even by the government. The same warning that Nenekole gave to his people. Number two, the indigenous must have access to the lagoon because a lot of them feed from the lagoon but greed greed set in political greed now Magdam has been able to play his uh, car so well with the i mean parties that come into power and go away if it is this party that comes he's a businessman he comes in he was able to do his things that other one comes the same thing but the people of adan had been crying for an investor because the salt in the lagoon was breaking down and it was declining. So they needed an investor. So the chiefs of Adan called on the president to kindly bring an investor. And Magdan became that investor. He didn't choose himself as an investor. He was approached and he went there that I will invest. Little did they know that they were bringing a demon onto the salt. You know why he became the demon? Remember we said under no circumstances should the Songo Lagoon be ever monopolized. La La the Lagoon was given to them by Nenekole, their ancestor. 
and they respect that. The livelihood of the people is from the lagoon. When Magdan went in there, he was not ready for a shared concession. In the days when the con confusion even came, there were how many concessions? Three concessions. When Magdan went there, he took the whole of the lagoon, not sharing it with anybody. And he told me in an interview, if I don't get the full concession, then I don't need it as a businessman I'm going to lose. And he gave his reasons, with which we have shared on this platform several times. Today, we won't go into his reasons. But political favor, he got it from the ruling party. All right, so look at the cartoon. Watch it. What does it say? Of course, the man up there is McDan. And the man uh, with the, I mean, um, 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 how's it? How's it? The, the face towel in the right hand. Is who? I, tell, I believe that's a face towel. It's, 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 it's the president of the Republic of Ghana. That's his image. And then the man down there says what? He must be taught to do the right thing. And the president says what? How dare you touch my Dan? Of course, it's almost saying my Dan. That's it. That's the whole story. The right thing is not being done. Come here. Hear me now. So listen. From the days when the confusion came and Margaret Kuon was shot and killed, watch the statue of Margaret Kuon, which you saw earlier. Watch it. You see her holding a baby. She was a pregnant woman. And she had a nursing baby at the same time. She was shot and killed. All because of the salt. In fact, she was not even at the sight of the salt. She was sitting with somebody talking when a stray bullet hit her and killed her. I've got to do the investigation and everything. Cover the whole thing in Adan. Now hear me now. After all this, Magdan has taken the whole concession. And when the people were agitating, he told them, I'm going to provide you with jobs. He said, we don't want the jobs. We just want to be on our lagoon. He said, I'll give you jobs. I'll give you an astroturf. Oh, I will even allow you some small pans so that you also go there and harvest the salt. They said, no, we don't want that. Let's give Magdan a concession and leave the people another concession where they can go and have their own. But Magdan says no. He wants the full concession. He has spent a lot of money and he must make his money back. So today there was a demonstration. So all that story is supposed to give a background into the whole story. That's the demonstration. The people of Adan came out. Well-meaning people also came all the way from Adan, all wearing red. And holding placards. Look at them. Marching all over the place. And look at the placards. These are people from Adan. About 90% of all these demonstrators came all the way from Adan. And I've been dealing with these people for the past one and a half years. Investigating this sort of issue. And also carrying several, 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 several stories on this sort of issue. Now this is Libby Wanu. That is supposed to be the priest of the Songo Lagoon. He is the custodian of the Songo Lagoon. And that's him pouring libation. When I met him, he poured libation and cursed Magdan. They were all calling the gods to come and kill Magdan. The last time I spoke with them, they said the gods had agreed that Magdan would die. And Magdan is about to die. I'm not sure Magdan cares about this. All he wants is his money. Watch the story, the Magdan Akufu Ado Apocalypse, Adan Songo Salt, La Trade Fair, and Airport Terminal. That's what we told you at the beginning of the whole thing. But let us recap it. Come here, my youth. Watch me. If you are giving 10 million Ghana cities an airport terminal complete with a private jet license and a trade fair, which is expected to be a multi-trillion dollar hub for intra-African trade. Can you be described as an entrepreneur? If you are sole source for all lucrative government construction projects, can you be described as a world-class architect? If you are given exclusivity at the only entry point to Ghana to test and charge each passenger disembarking at the Kotoka International Airport $150 after the president closed all entry points. What are you? Can you be described 
as an entrepreneur. President Akufu Addo in November 2020 signed an executive instrument giving the entire Adan, Songo, Salt, and Lagoon, my God, to Magdan through his Electrochem company. So that explains what I was telling you earlier. Now, the livelihoods of the people of Adan who rely on the Songo Salt from the Lagoon was taken from them and handed to an individual by the president's arrogant, insensitive action. The people of Adan have been threatened and assaulted by state security personnel for resisting the forcible takeover of the Adan, Songo Salt and Lagoon. The community radio station Radio Ada was vandalized and its staff assaulted by tax for daring to speak about the Electrochem Songo Salt Executive Instrument signed by President Akufuado. The Ghana Airport Company Managing Director was sacked in the middle of a tussle with Magdan over the Kutuka International Airport Terminal from where he operates a VVIP lounge for his private jet business. Did I say that President Nana Akufu Addo has become synonymous with private jets? Magdan is the board chairman of the Ghana Trade Fair Company. Under the watch of Magdan, a self-acclaimed entrepreneur, the trade fair was demolished along with the businesses of several Ghanaian entrepreneurs. Under the watch of Magdan, a wholly Ghanaian-owned company was replaced with a Singaporean company for the trade fair redevelopment project. That's not all. We have more. Come here. So that's the demo. Come here. Watch it. They're demonstrating. All these things that you heard, the people here are not happy, especially with the song of salt. Their livelihoods have been usurped from them. At the same time, they are all going out there to vent their spleen on the government and on Magdan. This is a woman I know so well. I met her. She's one of the queen mothers there. And she's so, so strong in this fight. They want Magdan not out, but to be limited to a certain concession. Is that too much to ask? Magdan says, no, I don't want a concession. Even if they give me half, I don't want it. I want the full lagoon. Recently, Magdan boasted that he was going to make Ghana so rich that it will never ever go to the IMF again using the song of salt. But he has to deny the people the right to also be part of the song of lagoon. My brother, my sister, he has tax in the area, gun wielding tax, who fire and shoot. Two people have already died. Journalists have been arrested and prosecuted. Some of them have even been manhandled all because of one man's greed i've met with magdan before he told me his side of the story it made sense parts of it did not make sense the people are saying that it is not magdan's fault that they have given him the whole thing but his greed also led him there to take the whole thing magdan did not squeeze the neck of the president to sign the instrument Neither did he squeeze the neck of parliament to go through it and endorse it. The people of Adan are blaming the insensitive president. They are blaming the parliament of Ghana for not doing due diligence. And at the same time, they are also blaming the greed of Magdan. So you cannot blame Magdan 100% for this. He's greedy, yes. He's gone there to take the whole thing, but he didn't put a gun to the heads of these people to sign the whole concession to him. Right now, that is in the middle of the whole thing. If the government says, Magdan, leave, you know what is next? Judgment debt. Because Magdan is there legally. Now, if the government says, okay, Magdan, you leave or take a certain concession, next government that comes, Magdan is going to start asking for judgment debt. He can concoct any figure that he spent on the lagoon and Ghana will continue spiraling, spiraling. Spirally, like Alokoto. We are going nowhere. We are just running around in circles. Thanks so much to the people of Adan for that demonstration today. I couldn't be part of it because I was on radio. And, oh my God, I was on radio. I couldn't be part of you. But, to God be the glory, everything is everything. 
and we are going to join you in the next demonstration we would always be on the side of the truth nobody is bigger than the truth dash it away and bring me the next thing watch this hey he says minister for corpses and funerals in ghana hallelujah hallelujah this is the minister minister for corpses and funerals in ghana that is where nana kufuado has reached Dr. Yao, <laughs> appointed CEO of Mortuaries and Funeral Facilities Agency. When the gods are about to kill you, they make you mad. The president is heading there. Come here. Hey! Akufu Ado appoints new CEO for Mortuaries and Funeral Facilities Agency. Run the story. The President of the Republic, Nanado Dankwa Akufuado, has appointed Dr. Yao Cherefua. I like his name, very African. Yao Cherefua. I hope I'm pronouncing it good. As Registrar and Chief Executive Officer of the Mortuaries and Funeral Facilities Agency. His appointment, made in accordance with Article blah blah blah, boom 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 boom, boom will see him in charge of the licensing control and regulation of facilities involved in the storage, transportation, and disposal of human remains, a.k.a. dead body. So he's the minister of dead bodies. This is a country that has no respect for life. They respect the dead more than the living. You have schools under trees. You have hospitals that are empty. No doctors, no nurses. Facilities are all broken down. Nothing. You are putting in a minister. I call him a minister. A minister for mortuaries and dead body. Hey! This president has gone down in history as the most insensitive president this nation has ever had. It's food for the boys. But I'm going to tell you how this position came very soon but read the new appointee is a public health specialist and a medical practitioner with over 10 years of experience he previously worked as the medical superintendent of anya poly clinic in the various capacities at uh, a fian quanta regional hospital in the western region and we all know anya Dr. Anya is a member of this party and he is also the CEO of, of, of a Kolebu teaching hospital or whatever. He has also served as an external consultant to the National Health Insurance Authority and has worked as a resident medical and COVID support doctor at Gassem and other corporate institutions. Dash! So what? So what? He has worked for 10 years. He has worked at Gassem. He has worked at, you see, the, the whole story says he's the minister for dead body. This ministry will do very well in Kumasi. In Kumasi, almost every second, somebody is dying artificially. Come here, I'll tell you why. I'm a Kumasi boy. In Kumasi, they respect dead bodies than living beings. Not only Kumasi, the whole of the Ashanti region. I don't know what it is with the Ashanti culture. And I don't have any disrespect for people from the Ashanti region. I have always loved tradition. But what is this thing about when people are alive, we don't seem to show them so much love and respect until they are dead. I've told you a story before. At the University of Science and Technology, my friend at Queen's Hall, who was so sick, and was in the hospital at the time we were writing an examination, was about to die. The doctor needed some blood transfusions and some other side things like that. When we went, Abu's opinion was there. What did he say? Scanudia will be wow. But doctor, no. Or see, I dear no, a fifty fifty. A year fifty fifty. A chilese. A year bet to my chest, Kawinina, Skawinina. Na ye, a ye, a wa, Skabe, and a divis you. And see, a bear, media, and can see, yeah, and cut a scanona, uana, we, you know, a young Cassiamo. The look, those of you who don't speak, I can't. The Abu Sapeni was only saying that, listen, the doctor says your chances of survival are 50 50. 
We have the money here. If we spend it on your medication and you happen to die, we will not have any money for your funeral. So, as wise people, I think that we have to keep the money. So when you die, we would have a big funeral for you. After all, there's so much respect in a funeral than paying money and then you don't survive. I wept that day. And a lot of people who know this culture, they know that this thing that I'm saying is true. Funerals are more respected than Christmas in Kumasi and Ashanti region. They love funerals more than they even love Easter. They love funerals more than Akwesidae. Meanwhile, when you go to the northern region, it's the opposite. One coffin can take a million Muslims to their graves. Hey, sometimes the coffin has rats running inside. You will still go in whether you are rich or poor. One coffin, one million people to their grave. They remove you from the coffin, put you in there. They don't even just put you there. They say, hold the dick inside the wall of the grave and push you inside put blocks there to cover you when my father was buried was when i saw that thing i cried hey just put him in the grave quietly no they would dig the corner of the grave push this old man inside and then put blocks there and cement the whole thing so that if the person even did not die properly and after putting him there he wanted to come out he would die by force only god knows how many Muslims who did not die well were buried in there and they had to accept their fate like that and go home? To God be the glory. My brother, what is this funeral culture about? Do you all remember Marco Krekumante? You remember him, don't you? Marco Krekumante, that's him. My colleague on the radio, now he's a, a deputy minister of state. state. You know what he said the other day? He said that our funerals in Ghana are so picturesque, so monumental, oh, so beautiful, that we have to start monetizing that using tourism. In other words, they are going to market our funerals outside the country. So that African Americans, British people, and all those people can come. All because of funerals. So they are more interested in more people dying. So that the tourism industry can grow. You understand? Yeah, the more the people die, the more funerals. Because you cannot have a funeral for a living man, right? So the people must die in their droves. So that people can come in. A nation that is not thinking about life but death. These are the guys who are in there. He's a deputy minister. No brains. These are the guys there. And there was a very huge backlash. He went back and he kept quiet. Now we know who sent him to come and talk about the funerals. Now there's a minister for funerals and dead body. My brother, can you believe it? They are having a whole ministry for the dead, the corpses and funerals. Now the minister of tourism can come in. When our fathers and mothers and brothers and sisters die. And we go to sit down there to mourn. People are coming there to click cameras at us. <laughs> Look at their mouths, the way they are crying. <laughs> These are funny people. <laughs> and they pay dollars. A time that people are calling for solemnity. Jesus have mercy. Come again. A time that the whole world will be asking for sol solemnity. Privacy. How many people would have their family members die and they open their gates to the whole world to come and watch them mourn? No, sir. They all around the world would say that respect the family's privacy. But this is when we want to cash in from the Ministry of Tourism. Bill Gates and I say Elon Musk. Now to those who don't speak, I can I'm sorry, but that's how far I can go. It's sad. Very, very sad. Minister for corpses and funerals in Ghana. I wish they had minister for life. 
and revival. A minister who will make sure that people who have been pronounced that they will die, they will revive them and make sure they return. You know where Ghana is heading towards? We are going into the Guinness Book of Records as the nation that has more people dying than the living. You know the term they use there, right? Mortality rate. Very soon, they will start giving allowances for funerals. They will start giving allowances for parties during funerals. So more people will be encouraged to die. After all, there will be a grand party for them. Dash. When I return, Bekasa. Hey! Woyo! This is the black pot, a.k.a. Kukushonomo. Did you see that quote from Mark Twain? That when you live your life fully, you are not scared of death. You can die at any time and you are okay. But the problem with this country is they will never even allow you to live a full life. You saw that, that, that quote, right? The quote says what? That a man will be happy to die at any time as long as he has lived a full life. The fear of death is the fear of life. Why is it the fear of life? Because we are not living a full, day, full life. That's why Sizzler said in his music that I am not afraid to die, but I just want to live until death. Kai <laughs> Kafani! Come, run it. Hear me. It says what? Look at this. It's rolling. It says Nigeria Parliament begs for criminal colleague. Nigeria, their parliament is begging for a criminal colleague. Who is that criminal colleague? You see him now. That is the man at the far end. He decided to catch an abochi man on the street. Selling Mijungoru and Gorun Tula in Nigeria. And they asked him, Do you want to go abroad? He said, Oh, yes. I want to travel. My life here is useless. Okay, we'll take you abroad. We only need your kidney. We will take your kidney. The doctors will check you and do everything. And then, you know, it'll be okay. You know, blah, 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 blah. He wanted to travel, so he went. Fortunately for him, when he arrived, they checked him and realized that his kidney did not even match. Number two, the doctors and the laws in the UK would demand that you follow the laws 100%. What does the law in the UK say? Any donor must do it voluntarily and 99% of the time it must come from your family member because they do not want to encourage the selling of human parts. Now, if anybody can give, people can sell. They don't want that. So you have to prove that this is a family member who is actually donating willingly. So they will interview you and check you out for your mental preparedness for the thing. When Abochi Seringoro Tula and Mijungoro appeared before the doctor, he realized that, no, the boy was being manipulated. That's what the doctor realized. The senator who has a lot of cash, so much properties all over the world, including England and Nigeria, was only buying a kidney to support his daughter who was sick. 
and by force they wanted to do it and because the little boy refused they kicked him out onto the streets in the cold and refused to take care of him and he ran to the police that's why we are where we are the nigerian people the senators are begging that the british that found this man guilty of the offense should not really punish him. They should just bring him to Nigeria so that they will find a way of punishing him. And you know how it is? The rich in Nigeria never get punished. It's the poor. The prisons all over Nigeria, Ghana, and the rest of Africa, they only have poor people. Rich people never go to jail in Africa. It's not possible. They buy their freedom. Nigerian MPs plead for UK mercy on convicted senator. Run the story. Lawmakers in Nigeria have appealed to the UK justice authorities to tamper, the word there is tamper, not temper, to tamper justice with mercy over the sentencing of a Nigerian politician found guilty of organ trafficking as their sentencing is due on Friday. Today. BBC.com reports. I Ikwere Madu has been convicted together with his wife and a doctor for engaging in organ trafficking. The 60-year-old former deputy president of the Nigerian Senate. His wife, 56, and the said doctor, Dr. Obin Naobeta, 51, are said to have conspired to facilitate the travel of a 21-year-old Lagos Street trader to London with the intent of exploiting him for his kidney. Jesus. The, the, the three through this sought to get the young man whose name is withheld for legal reasons to become a donor for the states for the senator's daughter who was sick a report by the uk portal the guardian.com said the senator's daughter sonia ikwere madu reportedly had a kidney disease which forced her to drop out of newcastle university where she was pursuing a master's degree in film Breaking down the details of the incident, Prosecutor Hugh Davis Casey told the court that in February 2022, the man was sent to the Royal Free Hospital in London, where he was falsely presented to a private renal unit as a cousin of Sonia, the senator's daughter, so that they could perform a, an 80,000 euro transplant. Listen, 80,000 euro transplant. How much were they going to pay the guy? You will see, you'll be shocked. The medical secretary at the hospital was then paid to act as an Igbo translator between the parties, that's the man and the doctors, to help convince them that he was a selfless donor. The prosecutor further told the court that Ikwere Madu, his wife, and the doctor treated the said man mm, and other potential donors as disposable assets, spare parts for reward. And then entered an emotionally cold commercial transaction with him. We just harvest your ovens, throw you out on the street. Oh, if you are eating worms, we don't even care. But after even taking out the kidney, you are supposed to be given medical care. You go to the doctor time and again. You are supposed to eat some special meals. No. Right after they take it off. Kai, Igaba, Shegen, Banza. Prosecutor Davis further noted that the senator who owned several properties and had a staff of 80 by this act agreed to reward someone for a kidney for his daughter, somebody in circumstances of poverty and from whom he distanced himself and made no inquiries and with whom for his own political protection he wanted no direct contact. So he sent a middleman to hold this guy and bring him on so that they will be able to harvest his organs. My brother, my sister. And then it came out that this was what it was. They sat on the case for six solid weeks at Old Bailey. On Thursday, March 23, the jury found them guilty of conspiring to bring the 21-year-old Lagos Street uh, trader to London for exploitation and for defying modern slavery legislation. Now, if these guys are not punished, Many more African people are going to find their way out to sell their kidneys. They will end up dying early deaths and visiting early graves. But the Nigerian Senate is begging that, oh, he's a good man, you know. Please, can you tamper mercy? Can you tamper justice with mercy? 
they have the money. So poor people are just chattels. They are rich. So they don't care whose organ is harvested. Such a greedy, dangerous man. Don't you have family members? But he doesn't want any family member to come close. Because if there's any disagreement, this family member will come every morning and be asking for cocoa money. He will feign sickness every time because his kidney is with the daughter. And if he does get angry, one day he can come and say, Give me my kidney. My kidney is with your daughter. Give me my kidney. He doesn't want it. He wants somebody he can use and dispose of. Disposable material. You are a wicked man. Wicked, as they say in Nigeria. Dash him away. When we return, we got more. Hey! Woyo! This is the Blackpot, a.k.a. Kuku Shonam, where we speak truth to power. And here we do no politics. What we do is called, oh, patriotism. It's a Pan-Africanist channel. Come here. Now, we are supported so much by Is It. Now, Is It simply means, uh, in spirit, in truth, I-S-I-T. If you're tired of social media, uh, so much racism, violence, uh, nudity, and nakedness, this is your app. Download it for free from App Store and Google Play. Hey, you can upload your photographs and videos, meet other positive people online, go live, make video and audio course all for free. It's the newest social media app built by Africans. Support the African business. These are the businesses I like to support. And I am on exit. Catch me up there and let's vibe. This is what it is. Connect with family and friends, make memories. Oh gosh. It is crystal clear. Remember, we are also on YouTube and we are called Black Empire Media. Yes, subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on the uh, subscription um, notification button. And of course, you get to see our stories the first time they come up. Pick up our numbers on the screen and also call us and do business with us. Next story. What does it say? Watch it. It says, Ghana celebrates World Press Freedom Day beating journalists ghana descended two steps down this is a tamale based radio presenter he has a program called dagbang pampantua dagbang pampantua powerful program and he talks about politics as you can see he was on radio when they went to attack him and beat him up i know you don't speak the so, watch the video listen and I'll explain that later. I. Bokamelo, <laughs> 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 
So that is Sadiq. Those of you who don't speak Dagbani, he was just presenting on radio. The two guys came in and said, What are you saying? Say it again. And held him by the shirt, raised him up. Now the other man standing there, he saw that he had painted his hands all white. That's the macho man. And they pushed him to the wall. And he said, You, you are going to die. Open your mouth and your teeth are all out of your mouth. I will uproot all your teeth. The other gentleman there said, hey, talk, talk now. And this macho man was begging the guy who brought him in to just let him give him one punch. Kuchan could know him, just let me hit him once. After they harassed him, all this on radio, remember it was live. And then when they were about to go out, what happened? The radio presenter said, you think I'm scared of you? I am not scared of you, but I don't want to fight in the studio. Let's go out there and try me and see. So that's when they went out and you heard a little bit of a shake shake. And then when the radio presenter came in, he said stupid thing and ended up by saying, you think that those who fear you, I'm one of them. And interestingly, he came to sit back. In fact, he didn't even sit. He continued the radio program duty conscience i don't want to fight in the studio to show you that i don't want to fight let's go out and fight he returns to continue the program because he has respect for his audience hey can you think about that he deserves an award but when you look at the whole story hey they said tamale the bong fm presenter allegedly attacked during live show bring me the one from the ghana web bring me the headline and look at something those who came to attack were not ordinary people. Who. Press Freedom Day. It happened on Press Freedom Day. The day that we descended. The day that the whole world was told that we have no respect for press freedom. Former NDC communications officer attacks radio presenter on live radio in Tamale. Bring the story. I'm going to take only the first two paragraphs. A former deputy Northern regional communications officer of the National Democratic Congress, NDC. Ha, Idrisu Hadi. Pangaza, Paza, Paza. Yes, the name is Paza. It means I thank everybody. Mm? Idrisu Hadi Paza on Wednesday led an attack on Tamale based radio presenter Abubakar Sadiq while the victim was hosting a live show. And when you read the story, he went there with a macho by says Mr. Sadiq was hosting his political talk show in Dagbanli, Dal Pampantua, on Class Media's Dagbong FM, when the visibly angry former deputy communications officer stormed the studio with a macho man to attack him while the program broadcast uh, live on radio and Facebook. Dash. You see where you are? You see? On World Press Freedom Day, we celebrate it in Ghana by slapping people. The one that just passed, we celebrated it honorably by beating up a journalist. That shit away and bring me the last thing. This one, I'm going to spend just a couple of minutes on that and I'm done. Now, this one says what? It says... Uh, Rwanda teaches Africa to be responsible. Bring the headline. This is the president of Rwanda. It's called Paul Kagame. Rwanda successfully repays 400 million US dollar euro bond despite economic challenges. Dash it away. Dash it. So that's the story. Whilst we are going to China to beg the Chinese that we are so useless, we can't pay, they should forgive us our debt so irresponsibly. 
Rwanda has gone to pay. Amidst economic crisis, everybody in the world suffered. How come Rwanda that came out from a very long civil war that saw Hutsuts and Tutsis killing each other? About a million people were all slaughtered in that genocide. Yet they were able to come back. And they are paying their debts and all that. We are busily running around the world begging. Yet we were the first to say that Africa without aid, we must be able to do all these things without anybody coming to help us. Or oh, we begging for help. Today we are waiting for the IMF to come and give us a loan. And we have become a puppet in the hands of the IMF. If we don't get a loan from the IMF, it means our nation is up for sale. We are up in arms with ourselves because we are so corrupt, stealing from our own self, and corruption is responsible for the breakdown of our economy. Mismanagement is part of it. My brother, my sister, I'm so disappointed. But that's what it is. I want to say thank you. I want to say I bless you. I want to say I honor you. Remember, we're supported by ISIT. ISIT is I-S-I-T. In spirit, in truth, download the app from App Store and Google Play. And make sure that you connect with family and friends. It's the most responsible social media platform. No negativity. You can't be negative here. You'll be sapped out. This is the Blackport, a.k.a. Kukushonomo. Please make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's called Black Empire Media. Black is spelled B-L-A-K-K. -K. And of course, you click on the notification button so that you'll be the first to see our stories when we unleash them. In the interim, I want to say thank you. I want to say I appreciate you. Take our numbers on the screen as well and make sure that you reach us out for business. We love you. We appreciate you. It's been the Blackport and my name, Black Rasta. Hey! Whoa! Oh, <laughs>